Well, I love animals, you know. I think when I was a kid, I didn't quite know what a vet was. I either wanted to be a farmer, but I always wanted to really do something with animals and nature. I was very much into it when I was a child. I just really loved all that sort of thing. Um, I mean, when I grew up, my town was actually quite rural, really. Um, and there was lots of countryside, but now it's all being built on. There's fields I used to go, what we called scrumping or snobbing apples. So there's all plans to build on it now. There's already loads of orchards that I know. Um, the actual field that I wrote about, I called a, a child at the field. And uh, that's been built on, yeah. Everything's been built on. Yeah, it's part of your life though, isn't it? I mean, I saw this man, I think, I don't know if he was a alcoholic drunk man or what he was. He was, he couldn't, he might not even been very old, but the toll of alcohol. But he was sat on a wall in the heat with another young chap or old chap, I don't know. And they were looking at his photograph album. He, he had, it was very tatty, he had a carrier bag and he carried this album. And he was showing his friend what he looked like when he was a young man. And, uh, you know, we all do it. We all have a story. Everybody, rich, old, peasant, pauper or king, princes, princesses, the girl next door, the boy next door, the man upstairs, the man downstairs. We, uh, We've all got a story. And that's when, like, people pass on to they could die. You just think, what was it all about? What? You know, is that it? We all question that, don't we, really? I mean, my mum died many moons ago, 50-odd years ago, 55, 6 years ago. And basically, you know, i never seen her again. She's ne never there in the physical form for any of my marriages, for the birth of my children, for my graduations, even passing my driving test. No, no, not there. She's not there for it. Neither was my dad, really. I probably got to know my dad a lot more, though, over the years than my mum, because, um, how old was I then? I must have been about... 38, 39 when my dad died and I'd had a lot of contact with him since my mum died when I was 14 um, so I probably had spent more time with my dad and I used to, he used to come and stay with me and my kids and my husband he would come for Christmas now and again come in the holidays <sighs> yeah so but I wasn't doing family tree in those days, not really. And there's so many questions I'd like to ask him about our wood tree. Oh God, so many. Absolutely so many. I mean, he wouldn't have known his grandfather. His grandfather would have died before he was born. His wood, his wood grandfather. Um, or his grandmother, because she died young in childbirth as well. <sighs> hmm. Anyway, it's all very interesting. I, I do, I tend to do more tree work in the winter, by the way. I do loads in the winter. The summer is outside in the heat, doing videos and photos, visual diaries. Boring people stupid. And lots of these, most of these, have never been heard by anyone. My sand bay walks. I used to in the beginning. And now and again I will put one on. But most of the time they're just a visual diary for me. To leave if people ever want to hear them. 
but uh, some say, well, wait, you've heard one of hers, you've heard it a thousand times. He goes to the same places, says the same things. <laughs> That's one interpretation. <laughs> I'm going to have to put my hat on. I'm going to have to get in the shade, have a big gulp of water, and uh, I'm not being, I've brought three bottles. I'm not being stingy with it. Right, I can take my socks out of my shorts now. We've done the nasty bit. And uh, I just put that there. While I. Do put me on here sometimes, just in case one of the descendants wants to know what their grandmother looked like. And now and again, I put a video on of myself. At a distance. You don't want to see all my wrinkles, do you? Hey. I got pollen all over my camera, by the way. Let's go up here into this maze field. Show you the views from here. See? In theory, you can walk straight down there to a gate, but I'm going down the road. I do, like I said, I sometimes put the odd video on of me because, um, talking about family share, I've hardly got any images of my ancestors. Um, some of them are, I have got a lot of some, but some I'm talking about, I haven't got any images of my my grandparents I've got a few of my mums mum and dad so I have got some I've got none there's just one picture of my grandmother that was my dad's mum when she was a hundred that is the only one I've got of her she was a hundred and she was put in the paper and I got that clip that clip of her That's the only picture I got. None of my granddad, Wood, who died in 1947, before I was born. Um, I've got some pictures of my dad's brother, Henry, or Harry, or Jack, as they call him Jack, I think. Jack. He was Jack. He was John Henry, but they called him Jack. I've got one really nice picture of him and his children and his grandchildren because somebody sent me some that a first cousin of mine actually sent me some pictures of her and her two brothers no her sister and her brother and they were all in the second world war they're older than me they you know it's uh, my dad was the youngest of five or six kids and his brothers all went in the first world war my dad went in the second world war um, he had a post-war family before the war and then he went off to war and then he had me and my two other sisters and uh, and we lost because of the war my mum was evacuated we actually I mean she actually lost contact for us for our families in London so we didn't know them really we didn't know them at all we never had any bonds um, my grandmother came to live when I was born. My grandmother came to stay with my mum in Somerset. And then she, she was dying. She had cancer and she went back to London and died in London. I know where she's buried. 
I know where all my grandparents are. At least I found that out. Uh, I've got a few brick walls. I really, really, really want to find out where my gatekeeper is, where she's buried. I know where she died, but I want to know where her and Louis were buried. I really do. Um, it was the 1930s. He was. He died in 1929. She died a year later. And I've got this real romantic image of those two. Um, I really have. And they were very political and well read. And hold on. I just let this uh, jeep, not jeep, um, what do you call it? Carav camper van go by. Yeah, so basically, I um, I have this image, but I, I haven't been able to trace their burial. Or, as I reckon, they would have been buried. Most people pre-war, Second World War, were buried. Uh, cremations were not the in thing. Uh, I know they probably would have been put in a, put in a pauper grave. I really would like to know where they are. You know... They had a lovely wedding. They must have done. Bury St. Edmunds at St. Mary's Church there. It's a really grand church near the um, Bury St. Edmunds Abbey. Um, they had a, they must have had quite a lovely wedding because she didn't get married in a village. She, they didn't get married in London. Um, so I have this lovely image of those two. And they went to live in London. She went to live and joined her husband, my grand, my great grandfather. They, they went to live in London, in the East End. <sighs> they were looked after by the family. <sighs> they were given a room in the home of the family, so they were sort of looked after when they were old by the family. You see, that happened in those days. They were given a room, and they had this room of their own. I really would love to really love. There must have been something that those two wrote down. You know? And it could still be somebody somewhere has got st stuff on them. Um, because I talk about both of those are gatekeepers, really. Because um, Louis Joseph Ed Edward Stipe, my great-grandfather, all his family emigrated to Brooklyn, New York in the early 1870s following the death of his mother. My, my great-grandfather's mother died. He stayed behind and he stayed with and he married Marianne, Marianne Oak Brooks. And he was an omnibus driver for a while, then he, be, then he was a, worked in a cigar-making factory in the East End. But he's a gatekeeper because he, his tree, the Stibes, come from obviously Germany and um, back in time, 200 odd years ago when the Palantines came over. So he will, he links to that and I've gone back a certain amount with him. And Marianne, through Marianne, I have traced our tree back a thousand years. She is such an important person in my tree. I really want to know where she's buried because I want, want, I'd like to come thank her for, for being my gatekeeper. Right, over and out. That's all for now. Right, I can hear the cuckoo. It's um, not the cuckoo, a cockerel. He hasn't stopped. He was a noisy. Anyway, there's the Priory. I've seen one of the farmers going off a minute ago in his sort of van type car thing. And uh, I'm just doing a bit more videoing because I haven't been out here for a month. There we've got the woods over there, look, aerials. I've just come down from there. All looks nice, doesn't it? The fields when they've been. Look at this one. All the lambs must have been slaughtered by now. It's awful, isn't it, really? You see the sheep and they've got their little lambs in the field and when they disappear, you just think, oh, they've all gone for the chop. Chop. Yeah, look, no sheep. It's horrible, really. It's a horrible thought, really. 
I don't I do get a bit upset when they so it is enough to put you off eating animals isn't it you see these dear little souls playing and frolicking sitting with their mums following their mums and then the fields empty the fields they've all gone they've all been slaughtered to give us a leg of lamb so it's tender it is enough to put me off to be quite honest really but it is a lovely meat I'm sorry I'm, I'm, I mean I'm praising the, the lamb for its beautiful meat but to be quite honest it's um I wonder if the priory's open I wonder if I can go through the gate I might go through today I haven't done it for a while now, now I'll get in the field yeah Looks like the gate's open. It's not Covid restrictions, see? But they won't open, the quarry won't be open. I might go through though. <sighs> Fortunately, I have got video footage of that priory from 12, 13 years ago when they had the museum proper. Um, it's been, it might have even been robbed since then. Oh, hold on. There's people. That's a shame. Farmers about. I was going to go in there, but I don't know if you can do it. The primary's open. There's farmers about. The other farmer. I wonder if it's still closed. Oh, it's still closed. Still closed. Oh, yeah. That is actually closed, that gate. Yeah, I know oh, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah I know. I, I've been coming.